Google showed it has a few surprises up its sleeve by releasing the first developer preview of Android 11, one month earlier than it did last year with Android 10. I'm gonna take a closer look at Android 11 Dev Preview 1 next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Welcome to Hands on Android. I'm your host, Jason Howell, and I am excited. Why? Well, because I launched this very show last week with episode one, and already Google did me a solid by releasing Android 11 Developer Preview 1, the very first look at what the next version of Android has to offer. Now, Google plans to release a new preview of the OS each month from now through June, with a final release sometime in Q3. Now, I won't be doing a deep dive into each and every version that comes out between now and then because things change gradually if the last few years of developer previews is anything to go by, but this being the first chance to look at Android 11, I wanna take some time to showcase the user-facing features as it stands right now. And fair warning, there's not a whole lot to look at right now. Google will undoubtedly have some surprises hidden up its sleeve to reveal at Google I.O. a few months from now, where we usually get a full glimpse of the marquee features coming to the next version. But for now, let's take a look at what Google did give us. This is Android 11 Developer Preview 1. First cool feature of Android 11 is a native screen recorder, and you actually find it in the quick settings tiles up here. It wasn't added by default, but you know, if you hit that little edit button, you can drag it into place and it's there to, ready to go. So when I tap this, it's going to give me a little warning to let me know that everything on my screen is about to be recorded. And I'll hit start. And now everything that I do on my phone is being screen recorded. I mean, it's basically what you get when you download an app that would do this initially. That's what you needed before. You can see up in the top corner, a little cast button that's highlighted red. That tells me that the recording is happening. If I go back up here and hit that again, it will stop the screen recording. And now in my notifications, I have this little movie that I just made. Uh, everything that I was doing on my phone. One thing to note about this, it does not record audio, so that's important to keep in mind. And as with everything, this could change before uh, the next version of Android actually officially releases. It is a MP4 file format, so maybe that's useful for you. Keep that in mind. Up next is system-wide dark theme. Now, this was a setting and a feature that was part of Android 10, they've added a new functionality to it. It's basically a new scheduling option. So if I go into settings, I'm just gonna go ahead and search because I find searching for my settings is easier to do in the settings. Now you can see here the schedule button. That's all what we're familiar with, but if I tap in there, now there is a turns on from sunset to sunrise option. So this is kind of handy. Maybe you've had this active in Google Maps because Maps have ha has had this feature for a while where when it starts to get dark outside, now the OS is going to turn into dark theme automatically. Maybe you set up a time before in order to do this. Now it's just automatically based on the sunlight. So maybe that makes things a little bit easier for you. All right, the next feature I can show off is the share menu. The share menu can be a little annoying because things kind of jump around from time to time in, share, in the share menu. Maybe the app that you want to share to isn't at the front of the list and you have to like scroll endlessly. Well, they're doing work to change that with new functionality here. I'm gonna go ahead and share this Chrome page. And you can see down here are all of my options for sharing, right? Well, if I want something to appear near the top of that list, I can tap it and hold. And before, what you would get is simply app info. Now you've got that little pin button. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hit pin, and as you can see, messages is now pinned at the top of the share menu. That just makes it easier. If I'm always sharing the messages, now I don't have to scroll for it. I can just always hit it in that same point. Now up next is permissions. And I mean, as was the case with Android 9, Android 10, and now Android 11, permissions is just continually a very big deal. Google is doing a lot of work to kind of tighten down permissions so that people don't feel like their data is just being slurped up by everyone without them having a say in it. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Yelp app to show off what the new change is here. Now Yelp does have uh, the ability to tap into location when you grant permissions. 
Maybe, though, you only want to grant permissions temporarily for it. Uh, so if I hit OK, I understand, I get the new permissions dialog. And what you see here is a new feature, only this time. Essentially, this is like a one-use permission for location. So if I only want Yelp to ever have my location data right now until I close the app, that's what this new feature is all about. I hit only one time or only this time, and it lets me in. Uh, as you can see, I haven't logged in because I don't need to. There's the app, but it still only has access to my location this one time and not any other time unless I do it again. All right, the next feature has to do with Bluetooth and airplane mode. On previous versions of Android, you may have noticed when you were listening to your earphones, your wireless earphones via Bluetooth, and then maybe you're on a plane and you have to switch on airplane mode, that it would temporarily, it would like kick you out of Bluetooth and you had to reactivate it again once you switched over to airplane mode. Well, now with Android 11, as it stands right now, that won't happen, and I can show you. I've got these Hi-Fi Man wi true wireless earphones here. If I go into my settings, you can see I'm connected. Hi-Fi Man connected, and when I hit airplane mode, hey, hallelujah, it stays connected. It's a minor feature, but definitely an annoyance for a lot of people that they had to then, you know, resync it up and restart their audio. So that's a nice update to see in Android 11. All right, another cool feature in Android 11. Have you ever been recording a video with your phone and suddenly like a notification comes through and so your phone buzzes and then when you watch that video later it's like everything's normal and then the loudest buzz in the world because of the vibration on your phone coming through uh, on your video recording well that is now changed on android 11 there's a new api called set camera audio restriction and it allows developers to actually mute uh, sounds and vibrations coming from the phone while the camera is open so if i go into my camera app I go ahead and hit record. So I'm recording a video right now, and check this out. Do not disturb because of the camera. Do not disturb automatically goes on when I'm video recording. That's a pretty sweet feature. I hate it when my videos end up with a big loud buzz in the middle, so I really appreciate that one. All right, this next one has to do with developer features. Now, developer options is an option that you can find in your menu if you know how to get to it. And I'll show you how to do it real quick. It's kind of hidden. If you go into About Phone and you go down to your build number and you double tap it a number of times, it will say after like seven or eight taps, it'll say, hey, you're a developer. Of course, you're not really a developer, but what it did is it opens up a developer setting in your settings pane. So I'll go ahead and jump right to that. Here you can see, and this has been in Android for years now, a whole list of developer options that you probably don't want to use if you aren't quite sure exactly why you're there. But some interesting features uh, will arise, such as this one. This is going to be a feature in the new version of Android. They just happen to have it in developer options right now to kind of keep it out of everybody's view. And this is Bubbles. This is no notification bubbles for messaging apps primarily. So if I go out, I've got Hangouts on this phone. I'm going to send a message to this Hangouts, and you'll see what happens. All right, so I sent the message over, and you can see the little bubble appeared, and uh, it gives me a little preview of my message. It would be up in the notifications as well, and actually if I tap and hold that, it gives me an expanded uh, set of options that allows me to turn on or off bubbles. I had to do this the first time when I was testing it out. And what that actually does is gives me this bubble interface. If I tap that, it opens up an instance of that chat. And yes, it's maybe a little strange that I'm chatting with myself, but you get the picture. And I can drag this anywhere that I want. I can go ahead and tap it and remove it, move it over to the side. Chat bubbles are nothing new, but having it embedded into Android OS from the get-go that is pretty new. I'll go ahead and drag it down here to get rid of it. So the other feature that I found in developer options that's uh, kind of neat to show off here, we'll go ahead and jump into settings, developer options, and within here is a frame rate setting. If you go to debugging and you will find Let's see here, the refresh rate. Once I toggle that, up in the left-hand corner, you have the refresh rate of your device. This might be useful for debugging, yes. Uh, if things are slowing down, it's nice to get some sort of confirmation that, that maybe things aren't running quite right. I don't know, people have a lot of different uses for having uh, the refresh rate displayed there, and this is one way to get to it. Very nice feature to have embedded in there. 
Now underneath the hood are a number of changes that either we know about or that some uh, very crafty people have hacked into Android 11 to discover about what we can expect coming up. And uh, so I can't show those on my device specifically, but I want to call out those things because it's a pretty good view into what to expect. First of all, support for digital ID. Things like a driver's license, for instance. You could actually have your driver's license in your phone that adheres to ISO standards for security. That's on its way. Scoped storage uh, as a requirement for developers, which basically means each app has file storage in its own sandbox. It's good for security, maybe iffy for usability, depends on who you ask. So we'll see how that turns out. Project Mainline, uh, which has some core modules of the OS that can actually be updated over the air without waiting for OEMs or carriers to do big system updates. Really good thing for Android. They've added another 12 updatable modules. They had eight before, so now it's a total of 20. Really great for updates. And finally, a few features that some really crafty people have hacked into for Android 11 to kind of tell the future of what to expect in coming updates. Uh, the bottom row of icons on the home screen, that's called the hot seat. And it might actually become smart, meaning it's going to change to show what the UI believes that you might want or need throughout your use. We don't really know how that's going to work, but there's code that seems to indicate that that's going to happen. A feature dubbed Columbus, which basically means that you can tap the back of the phone, so not a fingerprint sensor, but actually just the back of the phone, a certain way to launch things. Uh, so maybe launching assistant as one example, stopping a timer, snoozing alarms. It actually uses the gyroscope and the accelerometer in the phone instead of an actual sensor. So that's really cool. And finally, support for scrolling screenshots using a feature called Extend. And these are all things that we think we're going to see coming up very soon in future versions of Android 11. So like I said, things are a bit sparse in as far as big user-facing changes go. These pre-release versions of Android are intended for developers after all. So everyday users would be wise to avoid installing these early versions on their everyday devices. And yes, I might be talking about you. If you do choose to do that, expect bugs, expect apps that perhaps don't work like they should. Basically, installer beware. Now, if you have any questions that you think I can help with on the show related to Android 11 or pretty much anything, send them my way, handsonandroid at twit.tv. And also, make sure to visit the show page at twit.tv slash HOA. That's where you can find all the ways to subscribe to the podcast, as well as find it on YouTube. Subscribe everywhere. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching Hands on Android. We'll see you next week.